This is Montana This Morning. An armed robbery in Butte. What we know as of this morning and a description of the suspects from the workers. Folks in Belgrade are voicing concerns about traffic. I'm Jolie Slee and I'll tell you what these folks are frustrated about and how the city plans on fixing it. As the city of Bozeman continues to grow, it's now trying to play a balancing act. I'm at Gracidio just outside the city limits and I'll explain how they're trying to combat that. And the Scripps Give a Child a Book program handed out books to kids in Butte and Belgrade yesterday. Just ahead, we're going to show you how it's brightening a lot of young lives. Alrighty, it is 6.31 on this Wednesday morning. Jane McDonald and Matt Elwell with you. Bright and early and gosh, it's... <laughs> It's still comfortable outside, which is it is, concerning, uh, but we've got some cool temperatures into the morning and that mm -hmm. does help us. You're still going to need those coats on the way out the door of the afternoon. Uh, you're probably on your own uh, yeah. for the most part. Daytime <laughs> highs are going to really uh, take off again. Full sunshine through the day. Temperatures a uh, mix of teens and 20s for most of the area. Warmer out toward Ennis, the Madison Valley, out toward Livingston, uh, dealing with some wind, likely to deal with some wind out toward Dillon at times today. But our temperatures are on the rise. I think um, low 50s in Bozeman, very possible. Again, possibility of some record temperatures today, but a shift in our weather pattern that's coming up. I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Now, Butte Silver Bowl law enforcement says two men stole cash and cannabis from a Butte dispensary during an armed robbery on Tuesday evening. Sheriff Ed Lester said in a media release that police responded at around 625 at Greenhouse LLC on Harrison Avenue. According to staff at the dispensary, Two men, at least one of whom was armed, entered the store and demanded money. Sheriff Lester said the men fled with an undisclosed amount of cash and some marijuana. The suspect, who was armed with a handgun, is described as a white male wearing khaki pants and a blue coat, 6 feet to 6 feet 2 inches tall. The second suspect is 5 feet 7 to 5 feet 10 inches tall, wearing gray jeans and a gray sweatshirt. And people who live in Belgrade are tired of the traffic. MTN's Jolie Salee tells us what changes people living in the community want to see and what the city is planning to do about it. If you've driven through Belgrade lately, you've likely hit some traffic, which isn't ideal for people with places to go and people to see. Yeah, there's a ton of congestion, especially in the morning peak hours and the afternoon peak hours. Public Works Director for the City of Belgrade, Camry Yulia, says it's no secret, Belgrade has some pretty bad traffic. One of the most congested areas, she says, is Jackrabbit, right? I, I'd say Jackrabbit is, is probably the, uh, the toughest corridor that we have that runs through Belgrade, and the congestion is very much occurring at the intersection with Main Street, um, also known as Frontage Road. As you can see, hundreds of folks from Belgrade took to the comments on Facebook to share their frustrations and hopes for the future when it comes to mitigating this traffic throughout town. Yulia says they're working on it. So not just at the intersection with Maine, but a lot of the other major intersections like Jackrabbit and Amsterdam Road and Jackrabbit and Frank Road. It's called the Belgrade Urban Project. And that would install either an overpass or an underpass. And I believe right now an underpass is the preferred alternative. And that would also widen the road out to five lanes with the goal of reducing the bottleneck at that intersection. Another project in the works? The public would like to see um, dedicated, uh, protected left turn arrows put in in those intersections. Yulia says the design phase of the signal upgrade project has just begun. Once that project and the Belgrade Urban Project are able to um, get to a state where they can go into the construction phase, that will handle a lot of the congestion issues we're seeing. It but it's a slow moving process, she says. The urban project will cost over $20 million, so they're seeking grant funding. In the meantime, the city is asking folks affected by the Jackrabbit Lane infrastructure to write in letters of support for the project. To learn more, you can visit our website. We, we need that public support to help bring a lot of these things to fruition. In Belgrade, Jolie Salib, MTN News. And the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office is investigating a rash of stolen street signs. The signs were taken last weekend, mainly along Dry Creek Road. 
According to Sheriff Dan Springer, simple signs cost $200 in time and materials to replace. But more complex signs can cost up to $3,000 if they are stolen or destroyed. Springer says these thefts extend beyond the financial costs. He said that drivers could face safety risks. The sheriff encourages residents to report any instances of sign theft. And if you have any information about the stolen signs or if you see missing signs, you're asked to call the sheriff's office. And last week, Bozeman City leaders annexed a 40-acre parcel. And some residents raised concerns about high-density development near their mostly agricultural neighborhood. Our Edgar Cedillo looked into how the city is trying to find a balance between growth and preservation. It's no surprise that the city of Bozeman has continued to grow further west and outside of its original boundaries. And as it continues to grow, the city now faces challenges as it starts to butt up with agricultural land and trying to figure out how to balance the existing area with city growth. Well, you know, um, I, I don't think we can be naive to think that people aren't flocking to this area just as my family did. <laughs> I threw it over there. Brendan Beamer was born in Montana, but he left for several years and recently moved back to raise his family. It's obviously a very attractive place to live, um, but yeah, it's happening very quick. On Tuesday, this 40-acre parcel was recently annexed into the city. A zoning request that would have allowed for high-density residential was denied, for now at least. Brendan and his neighbors are concerned about the housing density on this land. Wanting to see methodical, strategic development around Bozeman, Chris Saunders is the City of Bozeman Community Development Manager. He's been with the city for 28 years and has seen his fair share of annexations. Probably close to doubled in size. The population is going up faster than the land area it is. Saunders says that state law gives the city options to annex, but says Bozeman's approach is to wait for owners to join the city. The way Bozeman prefers to do it is by landowner petition, so the landowner comes to us and asks to join the city. Saunders says in recent years the city has expanded north or south as you can see on this map. And see that the western boundary of the city has not moved in 25 years. Saunders explains that the city's focus is not to grow out so much. Of growth inside the city on urban services working as a city rather than exterior. Which Brendan and his neighbors are hoping for as they wait and watch what happens to their neighborhood. Make it all make sense where we can meet all the needs of the citizens of Gallatin County, but also protect the charm that brought us all here. In Bozeman, at the city of MTN News. And free books for local kids. That's the point of our If You Give a Child a Book fundraiser. And last summer, we raised enough money to give every child at two elementary schools three free books to take home. Cassidy Powers and I went over to Saddle Peak Elementary in Belgrade yesterday morning, and Megan Thompson and Chet Lehman went over to West Middle School in Butte as the students picked out their books on us. Who here loves to read? Everybody does. Oh, I like it. I enjoy reading so much because, you know, there's multiple types of genres for books, like humorous, um, horror, adventurous. It like brings you into another world and sometimes when my mom wants me to do something, I really, I'm just like, I want to keep reading this book. Every student that got to come in today got to pick three free books. This is tricky. This is a new book by Erin Blady. I got Cat on the Run because I like the um, author of Bad Guys. Mm -hmm. I chose this one because I really like history. Uh, the Hidden Girl, a true story of the Holocaust. Reading enrichment, it helps with um, writing and speaking and helps them do better in school. Forget what you know, this book changes everything. Oh, how can you not read it when it says that? Yeah, I know. For me, books take me to a whole other world. It's like I'm there in the book. That is a librarian's dream. <laughs> Hi really everybody, Chet Lehman with you here at West Elementary School in Butte. Uh, my friend Megan Thompson and I had a chance this morning uh, here to spend some time with some of the students here. This is a school of K through 6 graders. Uh, there's about 500 of them in this school. Uh, and through our, if you give a child a book program uh, through our uh, parent company, uh, we were able to provide three books of the student's choice to every one of those students. And, Megan and I had a chance to uh, check it out as some of those students were picking out their books. 
Why don't you come inside with me and I'll show you what we saw today. Why'd you pick that book? Because uh, one of my friends said that it was a good book. I know my mom wasn't going to let me get it. It was to spend my own money at the store. <laughs> Sunny makes her case. What can you tell me about it? Do you know anything about this book? Um, no, I'm really excited to read it. What, what are you looking forward to the most about that? What, what? I like the artwork in it, and I'm excited about the story. Yeah. Uh, so I mainly got diaries because I like to get them, and um, I like to write a bunch of stuff about my life in them. Of all the books here, why those three? Um, I like Diary of a Wimpy Kid ones, and I like like war stuff mm -hmm. and sports. I like sports. The I Survive series, I have a whole case of them. Seriously? Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, <laughs> have you read any of those before? Uh, no. So my first none time. of those books, you've never read any of them? Nope. First time then, huh? Yeah. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. I just love it. All right. We are going to take a short break here in Montana this morning at 641. But when we come back with the dark days, cold nights, and winter weather, or maybe lack thereof for some of us, it's easy to feel in a rut in January. But we have some tips to make sure that the rest of the year isn't defined by just one month. I'm John Matteries, burned out at work, or perhaps you're suffering from the January blahs. Well, we'll show you the best ways to maximize your time off this year coming up.